Welcome to worship on what will be when you see this the Sunday after Christmas. Hope you, you are having a great Christmas holiday weekend and continuing throughout into the new year. God bless you. Welcome you to worship. As we've been going through Advent and Christmas, we've been celebrating each of the five aspects, at least, of that Christ brings to us. And one of those is joy. And here are the missionaries, some of our missionaries, sharing with us about joy. Joy is knowing Jesus, and there's been great joy in heaven this fall as several of our children have come to know the Lord. We want to wish you joy. How we think about the Filipino worship and how expressive, with the lifting of hands and clapping and dancing, we found great joy in the Lord as we worshiped together. Um, this is one of my friends that I've been discipling for a while and she brings me so much joy so I thought of joy when I saw this picture because she is still walking with the Lord and um, her, her and her husband have retired now from the military but she is still um, making an impact in her community for Christ and is raising a godly family. Y pues a su vez, obviamente que recibiendo el amor, la fe y esa esperanza, pues van a tener los muchachos alegría. Yo creo que no solamente los chavos, yo creo que todos, todos en el mundo. Que representa la alegría o el gozo, porque sabemos que el gozo lo produce el fruto del Espíritu Santo en nuestra vida. Entonces, la manera en la que podemos ver a los, a los muchachos completos, gozosos, alegres, es en la medida en que ellos puedan recibir de Dios su palabra y ellos la pongan en práctica. There is so much joy in seeing these young men from the children's home grow in their giftings and bless others. One of the things that has brought me joy this year has been was when I went back to Burkina Faso in September and October, and I was able to um, work with Pastor Bubakar, the literacy coordinator for the Bible Societies of Burkina Faso, and train him how to use Bloom to produce books in his own language, uh, including talking books, because he's also the coordinator for the Ministries to the Blind. He was so excited. It was just a joy to see. Joy. This has been the thing that has kept me in missions this year. This year has been the hardest for me, as I'm sure it has been for a lot of you as well. And leaning into the joy of the Lord as my strength has been what has kept me going. And believing even when I don't feel happy, that I can feel joy because of being in the presence of the Lord has kept my eyes on the prize and has given me the strength to keep saying yes to what the Lord has asked of me in ministry this year. Okay. Really appreciate that they've been able to be with us throughout this time of Advent and appreciate your support for them during this our special Christmas Eve offering. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time of worship. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Now let's worship.
Would you join me in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for the gift of you that you have brought to St. Mark's in 2020. And thank you for continuing into the new year with St. Mark's. Thank you for the gift that you give for the glory of God, for the gift of yourself, your gift, your graces, your finances, and every way that you serve God, that you help St. Mark's, and that you hold up Christ's witness in this world. So thanks for the gifts of 2020. And we look forward to seeing what 2021 will bring as we make our offerings and ourselves available to Christ. You may give online or send a check by the church. Either way, or bring it by if you're attending in person. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for a new year. We thank you for new gifts. We thank you, Lord, for new commitments to you. Thank you, Lord, and guide us in everything. And receive these gifts, use them for your purpose. And bless those who give. Make them receive abundantly and be able to give abundantly. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why? joyous strains prolong what the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song oh, 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 yeah. in excelsis day As we've been going through these weeks of Advent, we've been talking about some of the experiences that we have as we walk with Christ. We've talked about that Christ gives us hope 
which is an expectation of things to come based on the promises of God. We've talked that God gives us faith, and it's in following Christ that we have faith to know that God is going to do what God really said he's going to do. That God is the one who gives us peace, as we heard last week. And we've heard that God is love, and that God is, and as we imitate God's love, we will be obedient to God, we'll be, there may be self-sacrifice involved as we follow after him. Today, this first Sunday after Christmas, we're going to talk about a fifth aspect of, of, that we experience in following Jesus. And that, that experience of following Jesus is joy. Now, you may have experienced joy at some point in your life, and hopefully a lot of times in your lives, and, and maybe in some of the sisters and brothers of joy, things like gladness and that sense of satisfaction and, and um, happiness, all these are kind of related to joy. Yet today, as we look in the gospel, we see that the angels talk about something which is great joy for all people. And that's what we'll be looking at today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. And as we open up your word, we pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us today. Inspire us in reading and hearing your word with the same Holy Spirit that inspired the writing of your word. We praise you and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, joy was experienced in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And today we'll look at, at the experience in the Old Testament. We'll look in the New Testament. We'll look in the gospel as we put together those ways that God has touched people's lives throughout biblical history. We'll begin by looking in one of the Psalms, and we probably could have picked a whole number of Psalms, but the one that I happened to pick today was Psalm 70, and we'll look at the first four verses, maybe the first, maybe all five. This is what the psalmist write. Hasten, O Lord, to save me. O Lord, come quickly to help me. May those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back to disgrace. May those who say, aha, that is, they're mocking him. All those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, let God be exalted. Yet I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O Lord. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. As we hear what the psalmist has written here, we see that it's an exclamation of thanks and joy that, that God has rescued him and delivered him from some peril and some difficulties that he was facing and that indeed all of Israel would face. Over and over again throughout the history of Israel, we see that they are brought into a time of distress, that they turn to God, and there is rejoicing in their salvation and in their deliverance and rescue from that situation. This particular psalm reads a lot like a, a personal rescue, a, a personal salvation, an encounter with God and how God has acted in, in, the, in the psalmist's life. Now, this is an experience of the joy of God even before the Messiah, before Jesus Christ had come. So God's at work in bringing joy to people who are seeking after him, who, who want to know him, and who are, who are devoted to him. And that's what we see in the Psalms. So how much more it must be when joy comes through Christ, and then when Christ sends the Holy Spirit to bring joy. So let's turn now to the, the New Testament. In particular, let's look in Titus, the third chapter, and we'll look at a couple verses there. Now, Paul's writing to Titus, and this is an instruction letter, and he's giving him reasons uh, for the faith and instructing the early church. So this is Titus, verse 3, I mean, chapter 3, verse 3 through 8. Titus 3, 3 through 8. Here we go. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. So what Paul has set up is this is what it was like before we knew Christ. And so he describes what that is in verse 3. And then he talks about what God did and how he intervened in that situation. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. 
He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So we see that this is, this is God's intervention. And the result for us, he then describes in verse 7, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things. So that. So now he's talked about our condition. He talked about how God intervened he, through Jesus Christ. He talks about how we're saved and our lives are changed. And then he comes down to uh, why, you know, well, so what? And, and so here about halfway through verse 8, we read this. All these things have happened so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. And that's the moral, eternal good that God defines and teaches throughout Scripture. Devoted to, they may devote themselves to doing good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. So as a person experiences joy and shares the reason for their joy in Christ, then that is profitable and beneficial to the whole community and indeed to the entire world. This is Paul's teaching of what Christ has done for people's lives as he's explaining it, and we get it in this letter to Titus. Now, where does this joy break in? How do we, how do we first experience, where do we first encounter the joy of Christ and the promise that is in Jesus of this joy? Let's look back into Luke, and this is where we encounter our, our gospel reading, and we also find these angels making the announcement of Jesus' birth. To the shepherds in the field, the announcement of the Messiah offers joy, and it is something that is startling to them as they hear the message. So hear the reading from the Gospel, Luke 2, verses 8 through 15. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in the swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Then the angels had left, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Oh, let's go! Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the angels have told us about. So they hurried off, and they found the baby, and Mary, and they found Joseph. Now the angels didn't appear to Caesar. The angels didn't appear to King Herod. The angels didn't appear to the chief priests of the temple. The angels appeared to the shepherds out in the field. And it tells us something about who God comes for, who, who God knows will first hear the message of joy and of good news. He comes to the shepherds, indicating that he has come for all people, not just the elite. Let's look a little closer in this announcement, particularly in verse 10. And this is what verse 10 says again. It says, The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. So let's look at a couple key words in that. This good news is the word for gospel. This is this translation for gospel. Gospel is a, is a message that is exceedingly good news because it is transforming and it brings the things we've been talking about during Advent. You know, like hope, joy, peace, love, uh, faith. This is what the good news brings. And so they announce this good news. And it will be good news that is great joy. Not just joy, but a Great joy. So this joy is a cheerfulness, it's a gladness, it's a delight. So this delight, cheerfulness, gladness is great. So it's, it's magnified. In fact, the word that's used here in the Greek is the same root for mega. So it's like magnify it out, you know, like mega millions or, or whatever else it is. Megabytes, 
Here's the here's mega. So it's this mega good news. It's mega joy is coming because of this good news. And the good news that is coming is for all people, which is indicated by, you know, came to the shepherds, right? So it's for all the people. This is a global message. The Greek that underlies this this all message, all people message, all, the message is for all people. And the Greek that underlines that is the word pan, which is like in pandemic, right? So it's this idea. It's a it's this global good news that brings magnified joy and delight for all the people. The name the angels are announcing nothing less than a global pandemic of excessive magnified joy because of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer, that he has come. Quite an announcement. That's that's a pretty big announcement. Now, right now, we're familiar with the word pandemic. And when we hear the word pandemic, it's not a positive, joyful feeling that comes over us. You know, it's like, oh, it's kind of like the opposite. So think about being loaded down with the COVID pandemic and the feeling of that, how long it's lasted. And we could think of how uh, sin has affected people ever since the beginning. So here's this pandemic of sin that weighs down on people. And and we live in it so much, we don't even get to, to be so aware of it anymore. So here's this feeling. We get an idea. We, we're not so aware of the sin, but we're pretty aware of COVID, right? So we get aware of this, and we feel that pressing down and what that's like in our lives. And announced into that, announced over that, announced as the antidote and the vaccine to that, is the coming of Christ, who is great news for all people. This pandemic of joy announced in the coming of Jesus Christ. No wonder the the songwriter could write a song like, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. What joy it is to the entire world that Christ has come. This is the message of the good news that we share at Christmas and we share year round as we follow after Christ and we follow that angel's example of announcing that the good news has come, the great news has come. The good news of great joy that is for all people. And so we share Christ with others throughout the entire year. Jesus' joy pandemic certainly trumps a sin pandemic or the COVID pandemic. (laughs) Yay, God! (laughs) And so we give him praise, just as the psalmist described when we were back reading in, in Psalm. Now, Paul reminds us about how God breaks in and how he... He, uh, he never gives up and that there's nothing that can separate us from God. And I want to read that really quick to us too. This is, this is from Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 35 and verse 37. Here we, here we read, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or COVID or sin? <laughs> Should any of this separate us? And Paul answers his own question. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, through him who came as Jesus Christ, through him who is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, this one who brings great joy, a pandemic of joy, because God has redeemed us through Jesus Christ. And he offers you this joy as you give your heart to Christ and you live to follow after him. I encourage you that Don't let this Christmas pass without giving your heart to Christ and experiencing the joy that Christ has for you as he sets us free, redeems us, and gives us that brand new fresh start in life. Make that response to Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that as you come into our lives that we indeed do not need to be afraid because you have brought good news of great joy that is for all people, including us, including everybody who's, who's watching and listening today. We thank you, Lord, that that great news is the birth, the life, and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we praise you, Lord, for your work in our lives. 
We give you thanks and we proclaim your greatness. We will let all the people know of this good news in Jesus Christ and that you have come to rescue us for all of eternity. We thank you, Lord, for entering into a relationship with each one of us. We thank you for the times of intimate prayer and praise and worship that we can experience by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for meeting our physical and our spiritual needs. We thank you, Lord, for those times of Christian fellowship and community that we are able to capture and enjoy, whether it's online or in person or telephone or however we experience the community. We thank you your spirit builds that community. We thank you, Lord, for filling our lives with good things. We thank you, Lord, for showing us mercy, for showing us love, and for showing us grace. We confess that we have a great need for you, and we come before you with our broken spirits and our broken lives. And we thank you that you are present with us and that you are our sanctuary in all times, in all circumstances. We ask you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit and fall afresh on us. Fill us with your love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, and your self-control. Help us to love like you do by your Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive us for our selfishness, for our sinfulness, for our contempt, our pride, for our hatred, for our malice. Forgive us for not remembering to always give honor and glory to you because you deserve all of it, our Heavenly Father. All praise belongs to you. You control the course of world events, pandemics of joy, pandemics of COVID. You control and you use those things to draw people back and closer to you. We thank you, Lord. We acknowledge that all wisdom is yours and you know all things eternal and you are working for all things eternal in your plan, in your knowledge. You alone deserve all honor and praise. And we give you our lives in response to all that you've given to us as we honor you and as we praise you. Lord, we pray for, for those who have not yet experienced your joy. And we pray, Lord, that we would give up those things in our lives we're hanging on to and expecting to give us joy other than the good news of your coming. We know that your, your message is the one that is powerful and effective for salvation and to bring all good things into fruition and into the reality of our lives. So, Lord, we turn to you in all things. We give our lives to you, and we ask you, Lord, to come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And will you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. La, la, la. La 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 Joy to the world the Savior brings. Let men their songs employ. Like fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sound. 
Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next week, or I guess it's going to be next year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.